Hello, 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 and welcome to 15minute.church where we love God and we love others as we love ourselves. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm so glad you're here. Well, today's message is entitled, It Would Wreck My Image. Oh, yes, it would wreck my image. And it comes out of the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 26 through 28. And the Bible says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Praise God. Well, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, Jack LaLanne, uh, he was the fitness guy, the fitness guru. Well, he died at age 96. You see, and what he was, he was like the pioneer of exercise, fitness programs and everything. See, he was doing this long, long, long before it was popular. You know, to go to the gym, put on your outfit, put your earbuds in, you know, start sweating, getting aerobic, you know, or yoga, all that, you know. It was long before all that was hip. You see, he was famous not only for his TV commercials, his exercise programs, his fitness studios, and the, the Jack LaLanne Power Juicer. You see, he wasn't just famous for all of that, but he was also famous for some pretty incredible stuff. Oh yeah, let me tell you, man, he did some, some crazy, crazy stuff. You know, and, and got him all kind of notoriety. You see, at age 43, 43, he gets on television, the 1950s TV show, you asked for it. Gets on there. He does over a thousand push-ups in 23 minutes. Oh yeah, 23 minutes, he does over a thousand push-ups at age 43. Now, at age 60, oh yeah, what he does at age 60, he swims from Alcatraz Island to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. All right, now if that's not enough, he swims it, but he swims it handcuffed. Oh yeah, they got him handcuffed now. And he's swimming from Alcatraz to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. But not only is he doing it handcuffed, they got him in shackles. Oh, oh. Now he's in handcuffed and in shackles at age 60. Now if that ain't enough, you're like, oh Lord, if that ain't enough, he was towing a boat. He's handcuffed, shackled, age 70, and towing the boat and swims from Alcatraz to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Oh, that's gonna get you famous, man. Oh yeah, now, if that ain't enough, oh no, this guy, he's off the chain, y'all, so I'm telling you, at age 70, 70 years old, he does almost, uh, well, he does a similar stunt. I mean, check out what he does. He's swimming a mile, this time. He swims only a mile. But what he does is, he's 70 years old, all right? He's pulling, towing 70 boats behind him. See, now what they did, that's what they just did to him. They get him out there in the water, okay? They put a rope on him, all right? Put a rope on him, and they take that rope and tie it to 70 boats and tell him to take off swimming. He's swimming, okay? <laughs> they got that rope tied to him with 70 boats, seven, zero, and he swims for a mile at age 70. You'll see, as late as 2006, he's still keeping up with his own personal fitness program. You see, he's starting to get back all on TV, starts granting all these interviews and all this mess. But one day, one day, he makes up a profound and shocking statement. Oh, he's joking about it now. He's joking and everything about it when he says it. But let me, let me tell you what he says. He says, I can't afford to die. It would wreck my image. That's what he said. I can't afford to die. It would wreck my image. You see, when Jesus, when Jesus told the disciples that the Son of Man must die and be offered up, the disciples was kind of doubtful about all that. You see, they thought, how in the world could Jesus possibly accomplish his work if he was only sent here to die? That's what they think. It would wreck his image. Yeah, yeah, after all, who in the world would follow a dead Messiah? Certainly death would wreck Jesus' image. But we all know Jesus died on the cross 
And three days later, he rose from the grave. Amen. But it was then, it was only then, when they said, well, how in the world would anybody, thought how in the world would anybody follow a dead Messiah? It was then when Jesus told the disciples about the plan. You see, the plan is that death, it ain't going to wreck Jesus' image. It ain't going to wreck our image, for real. You see, death only reinforces Jesus as the Savior of the world. Because Jesus conquered death. Amen. In Matthew 20, 28, the Bible says, The, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. You see, in John 12, 23 through 32, the Bible says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was from this very reason I come to this hour. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Amen. You see, Jack LaLanne boasted, joking. He was joking that he couldn't afford to die. But you see, for our sakes, for our sakes, Jesus could not, uh, Jesus couldn't afford not to die. You see, for our sakes, Jesus couldn't afford not to die. It was for this very reason Jesus died for our sins and he rose from the grave. So instead of saying, instead of saying, we can't afford to die, it would wreck our image. Maybe, just maybe, we should simply say, God, take all my accomplishments, take all my fancy titles, God, take all my worldly honors and make me great in your kingdom. You see, when we do this, our life becomes the greatest life we could ever live. Like the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.21, So then, no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is Pastor C.